Welcome to 4th and 1, where I always got it done. Bringing facts by the tongue for the rising of the sun. This ain't me in the shotgun. Ha <laughs> ha! This is me and Fretcher TV having a whole lot of fun. Hey man, before we get started here, man, I would like to make a special shout out to each and every one of you people, individuals who took the time to subscribe to press that little red rectangle button. Yes, yes, the plaque came and it came in a major way. Shout out to my team at Iconic Saga. Shout out to every single person, contractor, videographer, photographer, editor, producer along this journey to a million. Now, you may say to yourself, does it stop here? Hell no. <laughs> we just not getting started. Get this out of here. First down, viral moment of the week. Let's see what we got. I mean, somebody made some tweets last night after the Ravens and 49ers game. Mm. Uh, you know, I guess you might know the guy that made the tweets. And so a lot of people had a lot to say. Born center, Brock Purdy, fourth INT with the cam face. Cam right now watching Purdy struggle. We got the LeBron tweet. We even got your boy Shannon Sharp. Somebody used him. Yeah. Then I used the Drewski. Hold on, we got another page of it. Antonio Brown, CTE. <laughs> cam told everybody. And yeah. then since Cam Newton called the game, called them game managers, Dak went 0 for 2. That's his record. Two touchdowns, one interception. Purdy, the record is one for one. Four touchdowns, four interceptions. Tua, record two and oh. Two touchdowns, zero interceptions. And all right, golf. All right, listen. You got it. You got it. You got listen, the picture. Jared Goff been playing some good football here. But I'm still standing on this. Okay. Bro, let's not make this narrative Cam bitter, Cam mad that he ain't in the league. Stop that. Everybody, stop that. Did I not just show you guys a plaque? <laughs> got a million subscribers. There's no need for me to go back into the NFL. So this is not coming from a bitter place. But what I will tell you is this. Brock Parity obviously knows that he didn't have a good game. My intentions was not to throw shade to a person or kick him while he down. Dak Prescott did not win the uh, football game. So it wasn't for me to just sit up here and say, hey, everybody, I'm right. No, that's not, I'm not, I'm not saying that. I'm not going to condone any type of salt shaking. <laughs> you know what I mean? In regards to these players, because at the end of the day, I know how that feeling feels when it's like you go back to your phone and then you see people tweet, you know, they share certain things. This whole wave of emotions in, in sports goes up and down, down and up. But the reality of everything is this. I know I was right, but that doesn't tell you to think that I'm saying that Brock Purdy is not a good football player. That's not to say that Dak Prescott is not, you know, primed to come back and start peaking in the right levels for the playoffs. Mm -hmm. Man, it's, it, it takes so much for, you know, guys to have a successful, uh, dominant game. And there are certain things when I'm looking at the game last night with, 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 with Brock. Started the game off on fire. Uh, George Kittle didn't get the ball enough, you know, as he was – you know, kind of uh, trending upwards with, with uh, producing uh, at a high level early in the game. But at the same time, a lot of those interceptions was tip passes. Yeah, yeah. You know, he hit his arm. He did. The, I know how that feels. Correct. So it could have been anybody. And I will not be an advocate to hating on people because they didn't have a good game. Correct. I said what I said. It never was intended to disrespect or degrade anybody. So let me just say that first and foremost. I'm not just sitting up here saying like, oh my God, like I told y'all I was right. Hell no, that shit lame as hell. What I am saying is yes. Did I say that they are game managers? Yes. And that still is not a bad That's still not a bad connotation. You know, but I said that there is only four to potentially five game changers yeah. in mm -hmm. this league. Yeah. That game changer, one was on display last night. Hello. Goodbye. The reality of who Lamar Jackson is, bro, it's not that Lamar Jackson is capable of taking over a game anytime or whenever he feels like it. We know that. That's what makes him a game changer. The thing that I saw Lamar Jackson do yesterday was he picked his times, mm. stepped up in the pocket, but he wasn't looking to always run, yeah. right? 
there were times where he just said, you know what, let me take this check down. This check down may be a check down, but I'm gaining 12 plus on this play. Yeah. A play that was supposed to be stopped as a, either an incomplete, a scramble, or just a throwaway. He managed to still get a plus on that. Now, we got some Lamar coming. Now, it's, it's, don't, we ain't going to give him all to Lamar because mm-hmm. we got some breakdown on Lamar going on. Okay, so that's my take on that. Let's stop the hate, bro. I said what I said, and that was not to degrade any type of player. We're going to keep this whole thing moving and rocking and rolling in the way that I only know how to do. Next clip. So, Miss Thompson, she's a reporter, uh, Sharissa Thompson. And she tried to make an analogy to a film, but I don't know if it went over everybody's head. Let's hear what she got to say. Hold on. Thank you so much. It's a milk the bucket. It's a dairy pail for the when you milk the cows. I've got nipples. Can you milk me, Greg? Hold on. That's another video. So she tried to say it off of this movie, Meet the Parents. I, I, I had no idea you could milk a cat. Oh, yeah. You can milk anything with nipples. I have nipples, Greg. Could you milk me? Yeah. It just didn't hit the same. Yeah, that boy Richard was... Sherman, like, yeah. is you choosing? Nah. <laughs> what you got? <laughs> no. Nah, Richard. <laughs> Richard knows something that most people should know. Um, I can keep it a hundred. Right? Uh, uh, Carissa was um, cited a couple years back for having some things leak. Mm. Carissa is unbelievable at what she does, but uh, I think that's a little too soon, Carissa. I see where you was going, you know, but those punchlines got to hit or they going to whiff. <laughs> Bad choice of words. Yeah, yeah. I see uh, what you meant. Yeah. yeah. <sighs> Anything insinuating body parts, areolas. Let's just move right along to the next <laughs> clip. There we go. <laughs> We got the ref with an oh shit moment, bro. It's like, yeah. You seen this, yeah. bro? Press pause right there. Boom. Uh, we got two videos. You got to do? You. Okay. Because there, there's a side eye. Yeah, we got the side eye. Of the ref. We got the- and at this moment, little Timmy knew he fucked up. Damn, <laughs> damn, damn. It's so many memes that you could do that way. You could do at this moment, little Timmy knew he fucked up. You do damn, 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 damn. 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 Then you also can say, oh no. Oh, yeah. oh no, 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 no. Oh, bro. Uh, that what? bat pedaling, bat pedaling, baby. Nah, that. that. You see the see, feet though. Look at the feet. See, pop, 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 pop. Right there, we have a misunderstanding of knowing your terrain. See, my man, he was supposed to knew you can't wear no white Nikes like that. You gotta wear black Nikes. And when yeah. Booby Miles go, yeah, Booby yeah. Miles gonna go with some all black Nikes. My boy look like Booby, no mouse. Nah, nah, nah. He running. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> Backwards. He trying to curl up though. You see the curl? He trying to he get out of the way. But it was some times where, like, first off. Just the whole infrastructure of, of, of placement of the referee. Yeah. You know who you're refing. Yeah. You know Lamar Jackson is, is capable of doing anything or doing some crazy stuff. Lamar is on the, what, the 15-yard line? He's scrambling back and the very well can go even more. So, like... Why is he that close from the he jump? He in the action, bro. You like, in the back from, yeah. from the jump, bro, you see where he was supposed to be. You see that other other referee. You yeah, only see his yeah. toes or his shins. Yeah, you see half of like, Get your ass back then. Nah, bit, bro. This is what, see, this is what That's black what people, get, yeah. this is what black folks always be like, bro, I got, bro, bro, I'm good, bro. No, bro, you ain't good. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm trying to see, bit, bro. I'm trying to see. Bro, get your ass back. Hey. Bro, back, so back. this man can cook. Yeah. Bro. Like, that's Fred Warner, all-pro linebacker, chasing an all-pro skill set. Bro, I'm A get- game changer yeah. here, right? I'm getting gone. Let him change this game, but not you change the game, bro. Yeah. yeah. He game changer. Cam, I'm a game changer. <laughs> I'm a game changer. Watch me change the game. Bloop. Like, ref, I wasn't talking about you in particular. <laughs> Do your damn job, man. <laughs> Come on. Next man. clip. Here we go. Second down. Questionable call of the week. Let's see what we got. So we got Mark, Mike Florio. You know, he called out the Ravens. And uh, 
I don't know. I I really feel like you the new leader of all the like, like players on. speaking up. About come they on, like, bro. They starting to call a lot of these come people on, out bro. now. I'm crazy though. Yeah. I don't know what I'm doing though. Yeah. But I, but but I keep going viral though. Come on, bro. But there's still people in the comments that's talking about. Oh, but you didn't jump on the field. Yeah. on Fumble in the super. Oh, but you had a bad. bad. Who else is the leader of the new wave? Leader of the new school. Talk to me. Of, what, of, of media being presented to you. No, oh. I'm not going to forget about the bar stews of the world. I ain't going to mm. forget about the Pat McAfee's of the world. I ain't going to forget about the best damn sports show, period, back in the day day. But I ain't never seen this bold inflection of, of, of tone, vernacular, and, in media, or sports media. And you did it, though. I'm doing it. Though. Hello. Goodbye. Man, That's the kind of bro. Like, like, man, play the clip. Let me tell you. Yeah, man, what you said? You said, you said. You said I'm some dumb. I ain't plum dumb. Come you on. Dig what I'm saying. Talk to me. I done came and gone already. Here we go. Play the clip. The 49ers kicked the shit out of the Ravens Here? on Monday night. I'm sorry. I know that's disrespectful to the Ravens, but let's be realistic. At home, they got to fly across the country on Christmas night, and the 49ers are waiting. Yeah. Because we in the NFL, we play ball, you know, not to take away from that team, but you can't just discredit us. We grown men, we got to feed our family. And he can have his opinion, but just don't be just, just talking like that. You know, that's disrespectful. That's very disrespectful. But no, not to take away from the 49ers at all, because, like, they agree all across the board, but. This is after the game. As well. This is you know, before. No, you know, no, this is um, after the game. I'm sorry. We play ball. This is after the game. But he already watched the whole thing. Keep doing the job, but just don't just come, come off like that towards us. You know, that's disrespectful. Like I said, Hell yeah, that's disrespectful. You know, if he would put him past him, I feel like it would have been different for him. He wouldn't say that. He would be respectful, you know. Rydell on Rydell, what? Like, come on, bro. We respect but when I, look, hold on, press pause right there. But when I sit up here and I say, and I have every single right to speak on quarterback play, football play as a whole. That's fact. What the hell does... Mike Florio knows outside of journalism, Bro. even though he's been covering this, the sport of football, basketball, baseball, golf, tennis. And I'm not trying to discredit what he has been able to do yeah. over a substantial amount of time. But he ain't been but between the lines. sit your ass down yeah. because now, now guys who should be talking, turn their mic up a little bit more. Turn this mother, turn Come it on. up a little <laughs> bit more. Because I'm telling you like, they are about to get exposed. Yeah. They're about to get exposed because Mike Florio has never played football at a at a level where it mattered. And this is not this is not me disrespecting Mike yeah, Florio because this is the reality of society right now. When I say something like that, oh Cam, he rambunctious. This is man that's bitter. No, I'm speaking for the thousands of NFL players that's in the league right now that has been getting critiqued by guys like Mike Florio for yeah. years, and he ain't been held accountable. Yeah. He ain't got tweets that saying, oh my God, you know, he didn't jump on this and that. But when I start attacking personal defamations to, to certain people, if I were to go do my research on the Mike Florios, the Stephen A. Smiths, the the uh, any ESPN personalities Skip that's out Bayless's. there, Skip Baylesses, I'm pretty sure I can find some, some flaw shit. Yeah, facts. Real I mean, I mean, it's easy for a person to, to to talk about somebody who's been in the limelight since I was 19 years old. Facts. Looking at a guy like LeBron James who's been in the limelight since he was damn near 13, 14 years old. Yeah. So, so Mike, and, and I'm sorry for you to just catch this bullet, but <laughs> my boy, look, I respect everything that you've done and are doing. But when you start trying to say they gonna beat the man, you need somebody else. You've all like people have always needed to be proven right. Yeah. And the thing is this: if Brock Purdy would have threw four touchdowns, mm -hmm. I would have still said Brock Purdy had a hell of a game. Yeah. But that, but me looking at the game and understanding the game from from where I sit and how I look at film and I say certain things and I'm saying it's almost to be discredited because oh, you tweeting from the box. You, this the year of the backup quarterback. No, yeah. no, no. No backup quarterback or no quarterback should feel threatened. Yeah. I'm going to tell you who should be feel threatened. All these media folks. Because they don't let a real one in the damn door. Boom. And I'm here to stay, baby. You're partying so, and standing so, on the couches. God. You're absolutely right. That's a questionable damn call. Because if I were to ask Mike Florio, 
to 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 perform in front of eighty to ninety thousand, and to try just to try to do what Lamar Jackson is able to do. Yeah. Or to try, because some, some I'm going to say, to try to do what Cam Newton once did. Mm. You can do it. But guess what? Cam Newton can cover the sport like you can do, too. Well, let's show him then, Cam. Say less. Come on. Say less. Don't pay less, baby. Aye. Here we go. Next clip. So we're going to take a little, since you was talking about that, we're going to go back into time a little bit. So Jalen Hurts just broke your record mm -hmm. for the most rushing touchdowns in a season by a quarterback in NFL history. Yeah. People are saying that your rushing touchdowns were more impressive. Um, his came off of the tush push. But nevertheless, we it's wanted to see down. how your touchdowns happen. See, Plants is he goes airborne. Mm. Yeah. So just going back to that moment, like, talk about Jalen Hurts, but also talk about this moment. Like, did you know you was doing yeah, this? Yeah, Jalen is definitely a, a, a product of a situation that is favorable to his strengths, yeah. similar to what I was, too. Correct. When I see Jalen Hurts doing it, it doesn't make me bitter. Shit, records are documented to be broken, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. Did you know he was up on that? Hell no, I didn't know. I seen huh. it at the end of the game. Do you even know all your records? Fuck no. <laughs> Shit. Does Mike Florio know all my damn records? <laughs> Possibly. Hey, you talking about? Bro, I don't pay attention to that shit. I don't yeah. give a damn about it. I'm just trying to hold people accountable to the things that they've done. Mm -hmm. I did this, bro. I, I'm able to sit back at night, <laughs> take a cigar to work day, blow that motherfucker out, give my honest opinion about sports. Like, who really can do what they want to do? Yeah. And speak on what they want to speak on. Simple. Yeah, yeah. Like, so I'm I'm in a great space right now. Mm -hmm. I ain't better. Why would I be better? Because I'm holding media people accountable. No. So when I see Jalen Hurts doing what he's supposed to do, what I'm going to say, oh, he have a lot of help. Hell no. Nah. Man, break all the motherfuckers. Yeah. Hell. See, that's what they there for. But why you breaking records, you still going to keep me relevant because he has X amount of more touchdowns to catch. Can do Hell, I hope that shit does happen. Yeah. Shout out that motherfucker. <laughs> Shit, I don't care nothing about that. Man, I didn't play the game for that. I, I, my impact was felt. So, you know, as we kind of take this whole ride of, of, of understanding and bringing people back into the world, Jalen Hurts, bro, you're doing an unbelievable job. So real quick, can, you, can we go to this play real quick? Because that's mm -hmm. not a regular play. And so, you know, I'm not even going to pass that. Like, anybody can just do that flip in the end zone and – the average quarterback be knocked out right now. Still, nah, see, see, I'm a, I'm a drop a gem right now. I was just blessed with the, the ability to just be fearless. Mm -hmm. uh, right here, press pause. I never knew that I would be airborne, but if anything, you see that white line right there? Yeah. I wish more people would know this. What? There's an imaginary line mm -hmm. that when I played. I already knew there was a, a millisecond that I thought if I'm approaching this goal line, mm -hmm. I just got to cross the ball over it. Yeah. So when I go over it that way or go under it, whatever, I was just going to do it. So there's many times where you see clips of me just trying to get the ball over the line. Yeah. I didn't care what happened to my body because I would say if I'm airborne, I know how to tuck my chin. And at least protect myself. Yeah. That's no different than just running head on to a person yeah. and trying to hit them. You're still going to have an impact some type of way. Yeah. People didn't understand why I did it, but it was the safest way for me to get the touchdown. Because now there's going to be a big thud had I not ran. Press pause. Right? Hold on. Go back. Go back. Go back. Right there. It's going to be an impact somewhere. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 You see what I'm saying? This yeah. motherfucker ain't trying to damn do no shoestring tackle. tackle. Yeah, he gonna have the big boy. He gonna have to stand up. And big impact is going to happen from the defender or f by me. Mm -hmm. I'm saying I'm smarter than than the average cucumber. Yeah. <laughs> I just know to get a touchdown, I just have to cross the plane. I just have to cross. <laughs> Gotta watch the verbiage here. Yeah. This little tip. Across that imaginary white line. So I will always dive just to cross the line. You see what I'm saying? Now, did it come with style points sometimes? Hell yeah. Had but I was fearless though. Yeah. I knew the importance of the touchdown. I didn't want it to be extended another play. 
Correct. So when you saw me dive and jump, that was just me knowing that I just got to cross the line and it's a touchdown. I didn't want to damage my shoulder by running somebody else. That was a time for that. That wasn't the time for that. Yeah. I was just too close to the end zone. Yeah. I mean, people marvel over that. Hell, I even marvel at, at, at it too. You know like what I'm saying? This right here could have got ugly though. Yeah. I did that. You stuck the landing like gymnast. Yeah. <laughs> but like when you in these moments. Yeah. Do you realize what happened until like you get home and you watching Sports Center and you like, damn, that happened? In these moments, I then am reminded and and I always ponder this question. What? Could Mike Florio do that shit? Ah. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Could the person that's tweeting me saying that, oh my God, you a has been. That's why nobody called you yet. Ain't nobody ever called you. So, I mean, come on, bro. Come on. Hello? What, what, what did Chick say? Period. Nah, baby, I'm going to say exclamation point. Here we go. Next clip. Someone tweeted, Spinny tweeted, only one option for Chicago Bears in 2024 NFL draft. It's not Caleb. We Ooh. want Justin. The answer is Marvin Harrison Jr. And they said, uh, your boy Caleb liked that tweet. Um, so what do you think? I mean, it gets, it's, bro, listen, I, I'm not the one to move on. I'm, I'm, I'm the person that's going to try to figure things out. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And if I invested my time, energy, efforts to drafting this young man, I'm going to give him every right and every right. Yeah before I make a decision to yeah. move on for him. I can honestly say the Chicago Bears haven't given him every right, every right to be successful. Yeah. This, so he has still managed to have flashes in the frying pan and say, oh man, that's, that's a flash. Oh, so he is capable of making some correct. big plays if, if given the right situation. Yeah. Chicago Bears got to consistently invest into that talent around him yeah. so he can so he can be great. Mike Tannenbaum had uh, some words to say on that. Oh, okay. get up. How, in your view, Mike T, does the, the, the accountant in you, the, the capologist in you, view this decision? It's an absolute no-brainer. And I like Justin Fields. Let the record show this is not an anti-Justin Fields. This is called the salary cap. Something I tried to explain to D. Wood a decade ago. Obviously, I didn't do a good job. You didn't care about it when you paid him. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So let's be clear, Greeny. Bryce Young, the first pick in the draft, averages $9,488,000. Justin Fields, plus yeah. or minus, will be $35 to $40 million a year. Daniel Jones, and let's say it's Atlanta in a trade. I'd rather have Caleb Williams, who has higher upside, in my opinion, plus roughly an additional $30 million a year to improve the team. Here's the context. Gardner Minshew this year is making $1,750,000. Daniel Jones is making $40 million. Context matters in roster construction. Uh, okay. So? So you say pay that man. You got to. It's inevitable. Let's not, let's, let's, let's not ignore the fact that the numbers that we're talking are astronomical. Mm -hmm. Daniel Jones is getting 40 plus million dollars a year. Matthew Stafford is as well. Yeah. Not to mention, Kirk Cousins is getting a substantial amount of money. I mean, the, uh, Justin Herbert, he's hurt. That's risk versus reward. Correct. And if you worry about the risk more than the reward, then of course you're going to have this view on understanding just the whole cap. Yeah, mm. we want to look at the cap. Look, okay, you're going to have to spend the money somewhere. Correct. You, you're gonna have to you're gonna have to eventually come back to what I'm telling you're gonna have to still develop the player yeah so whether you can save money get rid of him or do this or do that look at the end of the day bro that money gonna have to go to somebody bro. facts and I don't even think Caleb want to go to Chicago. it's not even about if he is or if he that's just what the market is yeah you don't sit up here and go to Dumbo uh, uh New York City and, and try to get a place in Dumbo and think like, yo, I'm just going to try to get a place for $100,000. Yeah. No, nah, baby, that's $100,000 a night. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? You don't go to Buckhead in Atlanta or Beverly Hills in doggone uh, 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 California mm -hmm. or the Hamptons and try to make a bargain on prime real estate. Yeah. It's a quarterback in the National Football League. That's the most expensive position and the most important position in all the sports. It means so much to so many people. Sometimes it pans out, and sometimes it doesn't even hit the pan. That's fact. So I would say pay him. 
We have to pay him. There's no denying. Like, what, what future say? Ain't no way around it. You know what I'm saying? Like, bro, <laughs> ain't no way around it. You gonna have to get to a place where, look, okay, Justin's our guy. All right, cool. And then if you really want to keep it a buck, mm -hmm. bring Justin into the fold and say, what do you, you need, need most? Yeah. Because after you sit up there and you, you done exerted all your options, we done asked Justin what he need. We done uh, uh, evaluated the whole team. This person needs to go. This person got the da 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 you still going to have to develop your players. Yeah, that's you still going to have to pay somebody. Were you ever in that position that Hell Carolina yes. set you down and said, what do Hell you need, yeah. I'm going to tell you like this. I signed my deal the year before I won the MVP. Okay. So $20 million at that particular point in time was astronomical. And you was the highest paid player in history for the Panthers, right? Yes. So there are some people that agreed with it, and there are some people who didn't. Like, why are you paying Cam Newton all that money? He ain't going to be good. Boom, the next year I won the MVP. Shut up. The fuck up. Got, gotcha. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> but the reality is this. They saved money. Because if I would have signed the deal after we oh. went to the Super Bowl. Oh, my goodness. Now. Ain't no way around <laughs> it. Because yeah. now that price would have shot up yeah. so high. I would have probably put the team in a worse yeah. situation because they got that that market value would have been so extreme that we can't we don't have the money to go get receivers. We don't have money to yeah. go get now did, did it pan out, you know, from 2016. I don't think we made the playoffs, but that's just an example here. Yeah. Right? But did Jay sit you down and say, Cam, you need tell me what you give me your Christmas list of Hell what no. you need. Fuck no. 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 It was um Dave Gettleman. And he just kind of like... And where is he? Where is he? T Hello. While you ask Siri where he is right now, she's still... This may take a moment. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's just the facts. Yeah. There's some great things that he did, and there's some not so great things that he did as well. Yeah. But the point of this is market value. Correct. Here we go. Third down. Cam approved, or as I would like to call it, this is a boogie approved. Let's see what we got. We got Chuba Hubbard, man. He's from Canada. Yeah, 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 Chuba. Okay. He's in the fashion, though. Uh, I like that. Yeah. Would you put it on? I'm not from Canada. <laughs> But it's still it's still dope though. Yeah. Um, I mean, this is just all about self expression. You feel what I'm saying? Now, hold on, go back, right there. Yep. Oh. Slide on down. Last week I had a a public service announcement, and I'm still gonna double down on my uh, on my announcement. Uh, Mr. Tepper, this is uh, the player walkthrough, and um, some of us remember when that used to be packed with fans. Mm -hmm. True. This is like the intro to. You know, as you kind of walk and the players show, like they, I remember, uh, was it Steve, Steve, Steve Drummond and, and uh, what's the young lady name? Amy. Amy. Amy Clean. They were, they were, they were big on presenting something to get fan engagement as we kind of walked into the stadium. And uh, yeah, I remember when it was just loud. Yeah. And that was from the old parking lot. Yeah. No, no, none of this stuff Baby, right here. Like, there's nobody. In that area. Yeah. Come on, big dog. What you waiting on? Come on. Hit my line. Hit, hit, or they call, hit my jack. <laughs> jack. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because, like, right there, bro, like, you got to find ways to incorporate the fans. Yeah. I mean, everything is about sponsors. I see Coca-Cola right there as a presenting sponsor. I see so many different things. But the truth of the matter is this. Number one, first and foremost, we got to win football games. Number two, you have to involve fans in an organic way. All right, that was one of those ways. Yeah. But the fans, they see through all that. I ain't about to waste my time. Get up early to watch who? Shit. Yeah. I can only imagine how much those damn tickets were. To be, uh, to even watch 45 that. cents to get in the game. Shit, that shit got to be damn near five cents to, to, to <laughs> just stand at the tailgate. I mean, what the fuck are we doing? Shit. I mean, so. Got a nickel? Got a dime. <laughs> you can call me anytime, <laughs> Mr. Tepper. Here we go, next clip. Then we got your boy Bryce, though. Speaking of them, man, he, he coming out of his shell a little bit, man. Bryce uh, had, he was 23 from 36, 312 passing yards, mm. two touchdowns, man. We just got. How many interceptions? 
Zero interceptions. Any fumbles. Don't have that. Because they almost beat Green Bay. Yeah. This is why he needs help. Yeah. Because he played a game that was that was good enough to win. Yeah. Protected the football. Didn't have no turnovers. And mm. still you lose. Come on, bro. As quarterbacks, we've all had those games where it's like, yo, bro, I did enough to win. And it still wasn't enough. And Because if he didn't, they would blame it on him. Correct. That's the frustrating part about the, this sport of football that we play. It's so many different determining factors. There's 11 individuals that can impact this game. Offensively, each one of those 11 can impact that play. Yeah. So the demoralizing piece to this is, from a player, it's not that you perform. Yeah, you can go to sleep better at night to be able to say, man, I did everything I possibly could to win a game, and yet I still lost. Yeah. That's demoralizing. So we need to invest in special teams. We need to invest in defense. We need to invest in offense. Because that's a flash in the frying pan right there. He's, he's capable. So that's what I would say. It's like, yo, like, he gets it. He's getting it. These games mean more to him than anybody else for his overall development and growth as he goes into the offseason. But still, playing clean games and you still lose? Yeah, that's tough. He can't say that. Yeah. I couldn't even say that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Where you do everything you possibly can and still. And still. You lose. But Bryce, man, keep doing you, bro. Like, I, I like it. I see it. You know what I'm saying? And still be encouraged throughout this. And I'm not just talking about Bryce. I'm talking about every player in the league. There's going to be times where you get rewarded for bad play, and there's times where you get punished for good play. This is the time where he got punished because he still needs his team. Yeah. It's a supporting cast. Here we go. Fourth down. Wholesome moment of the week. Or as we like to call it over here, fourth and one. One finger, one pinky, one thumb. The one love award. And we got uh, Kirk Cousins and Jared Goff chopping it up after the game. Some nice words being said. (laughs) Yeah. That's... um, that's an expensive ass conversation right there. That is. That's like a, that's collectively $90 million to be paid between those two in 2023. They gonna split that cantaloupe right down the middle. Got I think one of them old 40, the other one 45, or something like that. D. Lou, what we doing with that? <laughs> we could flip that. Huh? Yeah, okay. We got some flapjacks. So, you know, we in the South. We gonna, we gonna flip them waffles. You yeah. know what I mean? <laughs> Waffle House, baby. We we'll put some syrup on them. Yeah. But damn. That's you love to see it, though, because I'll say this about Jared Goff. He went to Detroit to die. Yeah, they They too, sent him yeah. off to Detroit to die. Yeah. Detroit has always been places where careers go to diminish. We've seen it happen with two Hall of Famers, Barry Sanders. Calvin Johnson. So the fact that he's been able to change the narrative from the Detroit Lions, the pretenders of the NFC North, to now the Detroit Lions, the NFC North contenders, is something that he doesn't get a lot of credit as he should. Mm -hmm. Because that team is now built around him. It took time. Got him a quality running back, um, uh, uh, an all-purpose guy, uh, Amon Ross St. Brown. Yeah. You get you got the kid uh, Williams from Alabama. Yes, Put home. a good defense, get him a defensive end from Michigan. Like all that. Yes. When you put a team around this guy, the the right talent knows how to thrive in, in, a, in a healthy environment. Yeah. So don't get jaded by the fact that I said he was a game manager. We've seen this game have elite game managers that make the impact in a, in, a, in a way that has never been done and probably will never be duplicated. He the manager of the month, man. Come on now. So, so Picture hanging on the wall. Let's just, let's just give the, the, the due diligence to Jared Goff. And I've, I've seen a clip when a reporter asked him about what I said to him. Yeah. Like, bro, that's the core essence of the quarterback position. You yeah. have to manage the game. But where the rubber meets the road is, it's like, okay, can I do it? consistently every time that's where you know can i when i can no longer manage the game then i have to take over in in other ways that's where the game changer comes in it also 
you know, Kirko, Kirk Cousins, uh, you know, that's very wholesome, just that, that, that tender moment. Because all, all quarterbacks, it's like a, it's like a fraternity. Mm-hmm. You, you, may not, you may not be a fan of, of, of how certain people play. I'm, I'm pretty sure a lot of people aren't fans of who I am. But I just keep it above. Yeah. Jerry Goff is playing good football here. He, he spoke about some real things about, you know, Kirk Cousin being an inspiration, but also Kirk Cousins obviously identifying like, yo, bro, like, hey, you're doing your thing right yeah. now. You've turned this. T- I mean, look at the atmosphere here. Yeah, they understand. Like, I played in I played in Detroit a couple times. Yeah. It wasn't that that I'm seeing on TV. Correct. Folks is screaming. Folks is going to the game fresh, leaving a horse. Yeah. See what I'm saying? They leaving the game drunk happily. Correct. It ain't stressful drunk. I ain't looking for somebody in the parking lot. Dang it. You know what I mean? It's one of them, hey, touchdown, cheers. That type of energy around, like, bro, you have to curate it, and it has, and it will take time to do that. Have you ever had a moment where you met with another quarterback or player at the game and they said something to you? You was like, dang, I ain't know you felt like that. Hell yeah. Like, man, we all are fans of each other. And whether it was coaches who spoke of or players, and I've said the same thing to them. I do it with this platform each and every day. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? As much as I possibly can. I'm not here to to downgrade nobody's uh, ability to perform. I'm just calling it how I see it. Correct. And Jared Goff, bro, like you need shit, another 40 ball. Because what you was able to do What's for it? Detroit? Shit. I mean, everybody coming out the woodworks now. And they should. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So that's my wholesome moment of the week. Shout out to Jared Goff for uh, standing on business. And doing his damn job. And uh, I love to see it. So here we go. Main segment, Newton's Log. And this week's segment has to be around the importance of team stability. We're going to talk about a team by the name of the Baltimore Ravens. We're going to talk about a player by the name of Lamar Gunther <laughs> Jackson. Yeah. And in, in this whole approach, we all see the obvious performance that was on display on Monday night. But I want to kind of peel back the layers to ask this question to franchises all across the league in other sports, in other avenues. And the Baltimore Ravens have seemingly cracked the Da Vinci Code of sustained success. So when you're talking about over this whole tenure, they've had one head coach, Mm -hmm. John Harbaugh. Over this tenure, they had going on two different GMs. This culture was curated, originated by Ozzie Newsom. Uh-huh. Ozzie Newsom was the person who drafted the Ray Lewis's, the Haloti Nadas, the Ed Reeds of the world. That smash mouth, physical, hard nose, uh, T Sizzle. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Joe Flacco these guys who can make a difference maker or or can make a difference in being a key piece of the puzzle. Uh, so this is my point here about team stability. You have to create and identify what your team culture is going to be. Mm-hmm. All right. Why, why you're doing that, you have to be obedient to the degree that that can't foster. Like you can't stand on one thing one day and then the next it is what it is. You got to stand on business. You got to stand on business. So we've seen this recipe for sustained success over this decade with teams that have been able to win. Mm-hmm. Number one is a, a stable coach. Okay. Also, a stable management system. General manager, uh, owner, uh, however you want to look at it. And key pieces that doesn't really change. Mm-hmm. There was a there is a there is a day and time where the Baltimore Ravens really wasn't the Baltimore Ravens that we were used to, mm-hmm. but we all seen that shift yeah. when Flacco moved to the side and allowed Lamar Jackson to kind of insert himself, and it, he didn't just start off, you know, what I'm saying like yeah. Fourth of July or New Year's with, with, with fireworks. There was a culture that was in place, or there was a plan that was in place to kind of curate success for long term. Now you insert guys like Eric DaCosta, who still, he's not reinventing the wheel in regards to what our team is good at. 
Correct. When you look at the Baltimore Ravens, it's it's hard not to obviously mention Lamar Jackson. But Correct. Lamar Jackson knows he doesn't have to be this excellent talent every single down because he knows he has an unbelievable kicker. Mm -hmm. He has an unbelievable stingy defense, opportunistic defense. And that's the other two sources of football. Now, bring in the third phase of football, which is all about offensive success. They have the ability to run the football when they want to and when they have to. What do you mean? Mean when they're up. The Baltimore Ravens is a team that you don't want to get behind on because you know if you get behind double digits, it's going to be hard to get that ball back. Yeah. They're, they, they are built to drain and, and control the clock. They hold possession a lot. What we've been able to see out of Lamar Jackson this year is his ability to say, now we can really put up points with a stingy defense, with a, with a, a special teams unit that give him a chance by just crossing the 50. <laughs> mm -hmm. If we just cross the 50, John Harbaugh then has to ask the question or be have to answer the question, can he make it? Because if you get to the 42-yard line, the 44-yard yeah. line, this kicker can make it. That like Curry at the three-point. Come on, bro. Come on. You just, you, you just know that these guys that you're investing in, this, this puzzle that you're, that you're gigging up for, these guys are going to do their job. Add in the fact that Lamar Jackson has the pieces in place for him to really shine his light, and we've seen him shine his light in these last couple of weeks. He's been shining it out. Even specifically on Monday night versus a damn good 49ers team. Yeah, a very good team. See what I'm saying? Yeah. We've seen him get the ball out. We've seen him step up in the pocket. We've seen him make the plays when he needed to make plays, and when everybody was covered, he still finds ways to extend plays whether throwing or just scrambling. One of the, 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 the sexiest scrambles I've seen all night when he scrambled for, what, 12 to 15 yards, and, and everybody can't do that. Yeah. Some quarterbacks can, some quarterbacks can't. <laughs> Lamar is getting it to say, I don't need to scramble. Let me just check it down. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I don't need to, you know, take over this game right now. And we see this clip right here. Play this clip. Boom. Look at this. Mother. This uh -huh. shit look like a damn... Uh, a preview or a trailer from the damn movie Wanted. This motherfucker curved the damn ball. It it was what? A eight-yard reception? But guys are making plays for him. That's like some backyard ball right there. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> guys are still doing their job. It's easy mm. for the receiver likely or the tight end likely to drop it. Yeah. He making a play. Yeah. Guys are selling out. Defensive guys, when that ball get tips and overthrows, converts into interceptions. That's all locker room talk that that Ravens team has built their tenure off of, and that's why they've been able to sustain success. That team culture is built off of the quarterback strengths. Build an unbelievable running support. Give him the, 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 the toys to play with around, around him. Give him a very opportunistic defense. Give him a kicker that can kick it a half mile. Now, okay, Lamar, that 20% or that lingering 40% where we need your help on, do what you do. You're cooking with grease. I mean, hot grease. Psst. Psst. Like that shit is, is popping. It's almost one. You got to throw that shit in. Dude. Ah, back up. You know what I mean? <laughs> shit hot. And it's a thing of beauty when you see things like this happen. You know, looking at teams that are in the playoff picture. The ones that have real legitimate opportunities to go further in the, in the playoffs, they had that. Mm -hmm. A sustained coach, an opportunistic defense, a quarterback, right? And a culture that's with them. When I see the Miami Dolphins, you already know what they want to do. The, the Kansas City Chiefs, you already pretty much know what they want to do. Yeah. When I look at the NFC side, we already know what we got from the 49ers, right? Yep. A damn good ass team. Philadelphia Eagles, the Detroit Lions. Surprisingly, this team that's been making a lot of buzz, you know what I'm saying? It's almost like a race car plane trying to get yeah. that Tokyo drift. I'm just playing my job. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Yeah. Still a team where Baker Mayfield and inherited been some toys now. Yep. Mike Evans ain't no no Rudy Poo that you can just go, no. you know, get from around the way. Exactly. See what I'm saying? 
Defense still opportunistic. He's protecting the football. These things, when you see the Dallas Cowboys, the Los Angeles Rams, the Seattle Seahawks, these teams have an identified, comfortable coach who knows and has implemented his culture. Even in Cleveland, though. Come on. Flacco just popped in, but. Come on. That they team, had team they had was people already around. ready to it win. Was ready, bro. The unspoken word in a locker room is you want to be the team that's peaking at the right time. When I see the Cleveland Browns, they're peaking at the right time. Yeah. Right? Dallas, ah, they were hot. Can they bounce back in these next two weeks to say, uh, okay, going into the playoffs, we can get our shit together. Yeah. I'm gonna have right? to. The Colts, like these these teams that's right on the cusp. Mm -hmm. See what I'm saying? Like these these guys haven't necessarily identified what the culture is. When they when they do it good, they do it good. Yeah. When they do it bad, it's, it's, it's evident, right? But this is the thing, too, that when I was watching the Philadelphia Eagles game um, last night, Jalen Hurts wasn't playing lights out ball. There was a point in time, early fourth quarter, where that game could have went right or could have went left. Yeah. He scrambled. Threw an unbelievable dime to A.J. Brown on the sideline. Yeah. Came back, hit A.J. Brown again. There was obvious frustration around the team, but that's the difference between great teams, good teams, and just plain on pretenders. When, well, since you said Jalen Hurts, that should lead you into, I guess, like the MVP. Who, who you have, like, after Lamar, the game he had, I mean, like – People had Brock Purdy saying Dak Prescott should have been an MVP. Like, who you think you got at the top of your MVP race right now? Um, Lamar and Christian McCaffrey. That's it. That's it. Man, yeah, that's it. It's just up to them two to, to lose it at this particular Facts. point. Lamar Jackson, number one. Christian McCaffrey, number two. So, like, not 1A, 1B. Just... The only reason why that game got out of hand yesterday, it was because Christian McCaffrey's ability to impact the game just by handing the ball off to him, was kind of halted because it was two, like it was two touchdowns. Yeah. And it, it wasn't enough time to hand the ball off. But he was cooking. Yeah. He was cooking. You know what I'm saying? He was still in the kitchen. He was still in the kitchen with the apron on. You see what I'm saying? I'm going to tell you another one, too. I say with Jared Goff playing at an elite level yeah. these last couple of weeks, you got to mention him. Yeah. Um. And just the trajectory of what Tyreek Hill has been able to do on yeah. pace to, you know, he's like a 150 to 200 yard game in these next couple of weeks. That's yeah. really going to open up the whole can and say, okay, no, nah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. We got to consider him too. It's so many different things and elements that you go. So I'll go. I mean, in this race, you have Lamar Jackson, Christian McCaffrey, Tyreek Hill, Jared Goff. Yeah. Simple. Yeah. I mean, who? Who? What else? I mean, people. Some people would throw Pat Mahomes in there. I mean, Patrick Mahomes will always, always be in there. Yeah, MVP he's always because in. that system that's in place is catered to his performances. Correct. So it's. I mean, dare I not mention the the obvious here in regards to st a team stability over a long period of time, but it just comes down to healthy front office. Mm -hmm. They identify the culture. Uh, a coach who knows what he's doing. Correct. And then backed by a great quarterback. A and quarterback that the team has full confidence in. Yeah. And that's pretty much what it is. Here we go. Cam's picks. My week 15 record was 2-1. and one. So I went with the Dolphins in this past week as uh, one and a half point underdogs at home. They handle business. Uh, the Ravens handled business on Monday night as five-and-a-half-point yeah. favorites at the 49ers. Uh, Trevor Lawrence. But you know what? Baker Mayfield really did his thing. He's been baking, bro. You know what I'm saying? He, but th this is the thing about playoff football. It's protecting the football. Baker Mayfield has been protecting the football. Yeah. No sloppy turnovers, fumbles, you know, playing the field position game. <laughs> Giving your guys opportunities to let them make plays for you as well. And this is so crazy because at the beginning of the year, it was so much talk about, like, who's going to be the quarterback? Like, they both trash. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. look, look where they're at now. Like, top of the division. Yeah, for sure. You never know. And 
my whole overall record leads me to 27 and 18. Out of those 18 losses, I probably could have snubbed out three to five, but that's just the nature of the beast that we're playing. Uh, this week, though, Cam's picks looks like this. I'm going to go with the Cowboys. What? Yeah, I'm going with the Cowboys. It's about that time. But but this is the this is the this is the concern because I will tell you this. This was the the headline that caught my attention for the Miami and and the Dallas game. Neither team has beat a good team. That was Miami's first team beating a playoff contender team, right? And then I think the Cowboys have one one win versus a playoff contender team. Now they're going to hear it all week. Mm-hmm. Dak knows this. We can't find enough footballs and opportunities to give to C.D. Lamb. Motherfucker, they're fire. You hear me? So they're going to step up. They got to. You know what I'm saying? And they're at home. Yeah. Don't nobody beat Dallas at, at home. home. They've been balling at home. That's now. a different type right. of team. You're right. I'm going with the Dallas Cowboys. All right. All right. Now, I'm going to go with the Ravens over the Dolphins. Yeah, got to. This playoff football, baby. And Baltimore. Man, Tyreek, get off. But I don't see the Ravens losing at home either. This is playoff football. But I'm going to go with this one, though. Because me being in this division for so long, Mm -hmm. the New Orleans Saints are built to contend and always contend with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Yeah. So I'm going to go with the New Orleans Saints as well. In Tampa. In Tampa. For sure. Marcus Lattimore got his hands full, but he going to step up to the challenge. Yeah, okay. With Mike Evans. Okay. Um, That receiving core, they're going to get after Baker Mayfield. Um, And that's going to put me back in 3-0 for the whole week, bro. You feel me? So, I'm going with the Cowboys over the Lions. Uh, The Ravens over the Dolphins, as well as the Saints over the Bucks. That's my picks for week 16. And there you have it for this week's show of 4th and 1. Catch me each and every week, each and every Wednesday. Come on, they hit that. Yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. You want to say something? Come on, say something. She shy. Okay. I'll tell tell them that. Uh, Miss Placky said, uh, appreciate to everybody who uh, subscribed. And I'm here to stay in this media space. So um, without any further ado, as we end things here at uh, 4th and 1, catch us each and every week, each and every Wednesday. And this is powered by Iconic Saga. Make sure you like, make sure you share, make sure you comment. And uh, most of all, let's say it together. Make sure you subscribe. Yeah, baby, there you go. And uh, we'll catch you next week. Mm. Let's do it together. You want to do it together? I know you ain't got no fingers. I know you ain't got no hands. I do it. One finger, one pinky, one thumb, all together, one love. You dig!